So I wanted to just start by asking um, each of you to share a bit about how you have been impacted by the Gina revolution, your own kind of personal relationship to this uprising, um, and a little bit about your experiences over the past year um, in supporting this movement from the diaspora. So that's how we're going to kick it off. Go ahead. Um, well, let me, let me just thank you, Hanija and Jeanette, uh, for, um, for really bringing this um, incredible crowd uh, to this room and also um, organizing. Them. Sorry, can you hear me? No. OK. I apologize. <laughs> can you hear me now? I'm strong. A little bit. Um, yeah, I, I was just thanking the organizers um, for um, for organizing this uh, this panel and also thanking all of you for being here. It's an honor and pleasure uh, to be in the company of uh, what I can feel in this room, a, a very inspiring crowd. Um, so I know that our answers are supposed to be only three to four minutes, so uh, <laughs> I'll keep it short. And, uh, and I think this format is actually very much uh, in line with the spirit of the, the collective spirit uh -huh. of this of this revolutionary movement as well. Um, I think no, it's and it's not just my answer. I was talking to Bahar um, before uh, the beginning of the panel, and we we agreed that um, there's going to be a lot of overlaps in how we feel and what we've experienced. Not just among the panelists. I'm sure a lot of you in the room as well. Um, and uh, I think one of the overlaps is that for a lot of us, this has been a profoundly personal um, uh, trauma. Mm. And I use the word trauma. I'm sure uh, Kenya is going to talk about that in more depth later. Um, um, I, I apologize. I, I, I'm trying my best uh, to, 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 to be as loud as I can. Um, and, and I use the word trauma because uh, for a lot of us, um, and I'm talking for myself here, um, growing up in, under the Islamic Republic, I was born in 1983, and growing up under the Islamic Republic in a conservative family and in a conservative city, Mashhad, which is one of the you know, hearts of, uh, meeting hearts of Shi'is in the, in the Middle East and in the world, certainly, for us, um, bodily autonomy was not a given. For me, in particular, um, I had to fight from a very young age. Um, I had to hide my chador in my bag um, on the way back home. Um, I had to confront my father, and you know, as a result of that, and as a result of um, different mechanisms of oppression at you know at play in school and also in the society, but also in the family. Um, there was a lot to sacrifice at, you know, at a very, very young age. Um, and, um, and for me personally, as uh, Manisha mentioned, uh, since 2009 onwards, my public unveiling, which was a very political act um, and a very consciously political act, um, put myself and my family, immediate family members, in danger. Um, um, and for me, that was a response to what happened in 2009, um, which was you know, this whole collective act of standing up against lying. And, and that was, you know, a, a, it was sort of a, a collective action against hypocrisy at play at the time. And for me, hijab was, was the true manifestation of hypocrisy that you know, every single day in the mirror, I had to you know, um, look at myself, a different version of myself. And, um, um, and, you know, and, and I paid a huge cost for that. Uh, you know, the, the, the public um, state-run uh, smear campaign was part of that, but also um, you know, a, a long marriage that came to an end and became a very political um, um, uh, sort of act of rebellion against the institution of marriage and against the institution of family itself. Um, but let me tell this, and I think this is the place to say it finally, it's getting it out of my system, is that I truly felt alone and isolated mm. back in 2012 when I did this. And I was attacked by all factions, political factions, from the reformists 
to the leftists and seculars who thought that I'm actually, you know, this is not a political act and it has to do with certain political interests and, you know, um, um, uh, ideals that was not in line with their mm -hmm. politics. Mm -hmm. um, I was always the other, mm -hmm. the other for the left and the other for the seculars, the other for the religious reformists, the other for the government. Mm -hmm. And being in that position was extremely traumatizing mm -hmm. and difficult. And the other for my own parents as well. Mm -hmm. um, and all these years that I, you know, I was, I was kind of unveiled and I never imagined a day that this very act of unveiling one day would become the engine of the, re the most progressive revolutionary movement not just in the Middle East, but in the world. And I say these words very carefully. Mm -hmm. I use the word revolution, we can talk about that. Mm -hmm. um, I know it's, it's a sensitive term. Um, I think all of us were taken as, by, by surprise when this happened. And, and this is a history that we can talk about. This is a movement uh, with a very long and rich history, but I think it has its own discourse and it's writing its own discourse as it is unfolding. Mm -hmm. And that's particularly the challenge that we are facing today. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll leave it at that, I think. So we'll just keep going, going around. around. <laughs> yeah. yeah, why don't we go back and forth? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, the family. Okay. Okay. Yes. Um, <laughs> thank you so much, uh, Fatima, for sharing uh, your felt uh, lived experience. And thank you so much again, everyone, for being here tonight. I just want to start by maybe quickly acknowledging uh, two people, uh, two like this best friend of mine, Nilufar uh, Hamidi and uh, Elahe Mohammadi, who have been in prison uh, since last year because they were the one, like the very first journalists who actually reported on uh, the mur the state murder of Gina Amini last year. Uh, so uh, and yeah, I, I always find it necessary to acknowledge the privilege of being in the room mm -hmm. and like having the platform and being able to actually talk about this stuff mm -hmm. because many people cannot. Uh, so yeah, I feel like uh, in terms of like my personal connections to Gina uh, Revolution, something that happened to me like upon this moment of Gina was the fact that I sort of started revisiting my personal relationships with hijab, mm -hmm. just not uh, just as a symbol of power that I was contributing on a de everyday basis without even like being really aware of that. I mean, I feel like I have had like internalized hijab and I had like contrib I was contributing to its normalization in the society right by being part of the market of hijab right by being part of the market I would like buy m like many many head scarves on a day-to-day -day basis I would just you know give head scarves to my friends whom I knew did not actually believe in that but had to wear it so I feel like it was a moment of realization of the fact that I was not only like symbolically contributing to this discourse, but actually materially, mm -hmm. I would act actually you know, pay money to be part of this market. And uh, the fact that like we like in our really intimate and, and like really small circles of friends, we would actually talk about her job every now and then. But our colleagues, like our comrades and our friends, like, especially at the school and at the university, would tell us that no, this is not the right time for it. So when is our time? And the Gina moment is actually our time. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, this is something that made us all like really tightly and deeply connected to this Gina moment because we all have had the experience of being Gina to some extent. Mm -hmm. And uh, so yeah, I feel like that was actually a really uh, like aha moment for me mm -hmm. at least upon Gina Revolution. And actually upon uh, the movement, like upon the beginning of it, I started like reclaiming my relationships with people back home uh, and I felt after a long time that I can give myself the right to talk about what's happening inside Iran without actually physically living in Iran. Mm -hmm. I mean I would like give myself the permission because Gina was about me, Gina was about all marginalized bodies in Iran and like beyond Iran and it was like inherently in the intersection of from the very beginning so I feel like what happened was that I could reclaim some of the relationships that I thought I had lost forever. Mm -hmm. I would like reach out to people intentionally and ask them what is happening on the streets. Mm -hmm. And I want to be there, so what can I do now like from like outside? And I think this sort of borders of outside, inside, and who has the right, who has the authenticity, who has the authority to actually speak about this revolution sort of thing. <coughs> 
started collapsing, like the boundaries are blurrier now. Mm -hmm. So I think these are, uh, yeah, these are like some of the highlights that I wanted to share. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. On the way coming here, I felt I really have it together. I thought I knew exactly what I wanted to do. <laughs> but then after watching this, uh, I feel, I mean, this is the quality of this uprising, just like any other uprising, I guess. There is a beautiful chaos that is, every time you look at it, it tells something new to you. Uh, and I don't have it together. I'm just going to try to answer. But something wonderful happened, not only because we saw visually what's happening in Iran. I think another aspect of what happened is that it's so difficult to communicate what it feels to follow or be part of, a, of an uprising from afar uh, because there is this mediation of the digital sphere and the media. But something does get through. And I think uh, collectively being in the room and watching what happened on the stage, we can feel that. And much of the writing, I think, in the diaspora has been an effort to capture that. And, and that has a very, very fraught politics because you don't want to make a claim on a revolution that you're not materially experiencing every single day. And as anyone in the room can tell, even better than me, uh, this uprising happened under extreme US imposed sanction. So people had to struggle uh, paying for their rent. People were on the street on empty stomach. People were worrying about how to pay for the tuition of their children yet they decided to be on the street and say over and over, woman life freedom, So to talk about it from this position, and well, having just finished the dissertation, I'm so uh, still consumed with the question of positionality. I just have to, I'm glad that that movie was brought in the room because it shows that uh, there is something stark about what's happening on the street. And I was worried that maybe our presence here pacifies it mm -hmm. and I hope it doesn't because mm -hmm. you see the difference there is an attempt to be in solidarity with something that you do feel part of because you're from that country but you're also not exactly part of because you're here uh, but the affect of that revolution I think does get translated through the digital sphere and I think we're all transformed by that affect uh, I personally feel I'm a different person. I'm more mature. Um, I don't know if it looks like that or not, but I do feel that way. And only because Fatima talked about trauma, uh, and Bahar talked about her job, the whole dispositive. I'm just going to bring one other concept, and we can go all night bringing more and more concept. And we can, for maybe for a second, think about dreaming. What this revolution did to our capacity to dream. And I say it because Although I follow the women's movement, and I know myself as part of it in Iran for the last 12 years, and I, although I think, I've always thought that Iran is sort of beaming with possibilities. It's a country that has a very vibrant political society and has been, um, there has been a number of active social movements in the past uh, century. Still, what happened made me feel that I have to now dream much bigger than I have ever used to. Because what happened was truly beyond the horizon of what I could possibly ever imagine happening in my lifetime. Uh, it was a, a movement that swiped really a whole country around the cause of women. And not a cause that you would easily write, uh, read about on the newspaper or I think through uh, from the discourse of legal feminism, it was about the body of women. It was about the type of presence that women want to have on the public space. Uh, and I feel this transformed the figure of women in the political imaginations of Iranian in Iran or outside in a way that it sort of compels all of us to dream much bigger than we've ever had. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Thank you. <laughs> Thank you everyone for being here. What an oh, honor to so sit good. here and just kind of <laughs> contemplate on all of this. I want to just acknowledge yeah. the fact that this moment right now itself is a byproduct and kind of like a success point of Gina's revolution. Just the fact that we're sitting and we're talking about this. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I thought to maybe just quickly go through a very very compact timeline uh, of how things unfold for me personally. Um, a week before uh, everything sparked and started and just 
went on this roller coaster. I was in Mexico sitting at a coffee, cafe, uh, um, cafe with a friend, a new friend, and describing the story of exile and mm. our story of exile, uh, which I know now that it's many people's story. Um, and I remember she asked one question, is that, do you see a change? Do you see a revolution? And at that moment, it was <laughs> so blocked. Mm -hmm. Like, I was like, oh, that would be great. Like, <laughs> imagine that, you know? Like, it was this moment that I could not fathom myself, you know? Like, it was a wish, but I had not even mm -hmm. dealt with that wish inside mm -hmm. of me. Mm -hmm. And I remember I walked and I was like, kind of like lingering in this thought, but I just also like let it pass. I didn't even sit with it that long. And then when it started, things started like kind of happening. It was such a, like a moment of realization and going on on what uh, Kiana was saying about like dreaming. I think I'm gonna take it a little deeper into a collective consciousness that I felt like it was awakened. And it was from inside of my body, something was telling me that this is it's not you only like a lot of people at the same time are waking up to something and it's not about where their geography <clears throat> is where in the world they're standing and it's not about when it is that they came out of Iran or have they even ever visited Iran or not they're in diaspora inside Iran outside Iran there is something very tight connecting us all there is this big bowl and we're all inside of it together <laughs> And that, that to me was very great and massive. And I just really like throughout the process of protesting, going out and like doing very different acts of solidarity over the past year, I like very like gently started sort of tapping into that collective consciousness, mm -hmm. tapping into that, like what goes on in each, pe each person's world in terms of how that has shifted their own reality, how that has shifted their point of view to the world, and at the same time, what it has done to them that they act differently in the world. Mm -hmm. They take different steps, you know? Like, there is something about, like, yes, my world has changed, but then once your perception is shifted, that you see the world differently, you take on new steps in your life. Your priority are shifted. Like, yeah. your relationships are changed. Your diet is changed, <laughs> you know? like. It changes everything. Yeah. And it was, for me, that was such a, that was huge in my transformation throughout the year. Mm -hmm. Like, and Woman Life Freedom was, first of all, it's not only about women. You know, I want to also acknowledge the fact that very much like Black Lives Matter, that it, it talks about the oppression and it sort of brings out the point that like the oppression of women, it's what it's mm -hmm. causing kind of this whole uprising, but it is about trans it is about minority groups it's about like it's a it's sort of it's about a way bigger picture mm -hmm. and i i feel like there's value in repeating that over and over and over again because sometimes words are just not enough mm -hmm. you know they mm -hmm. just don't do all the justice that they mm -hmm. need to do and i think like the transformation for me over the year was that the first three months of it i was I had um, those words attached to my body, like on one of these signs, very similar to these signs. Mm -hmm. And I did it like out of like just a messy mind and I just made a painting and I did that drawing and I put it on a like a string and I would go to the streets, to every place that I would go, to classes that I was teaching, to the bar that I would go with a friend, <laughs> to the grocery store, to taxi, to subway, everywhere it was attached to me. just. Somehow my priority had changed. It was like nothing else is important as this one thing. And I got tired. Mm. After three months, I was tired. I felt, I felt still that I was alone and I was shoveling the ground alone. And I could see that I'm getting deeper, but I was like, I'm not getting where it feels like I need to get. Mm. And coming together as part of Bebu Collective was a huge transformation in this moment of realizing that I'm not alone and I can see these people who are posting and they're all mm -hmm. doing like we're all posting the same thing we're all shouting the same words and we have a lot in common is there any way that we can come together mm -hmm. is there any way that we can um, kind of process emotionally together see each other talk to each other and this moment of a collective 
joining and becoming a group of people who are organizing together. They kind of like gather, you know, every every other week and see each other and then just see like, hey, what's up with you? You mm-hmm. know, to have this continuous sisterhood was also extremely mm. transformative. Mm.